So you want to be an embedded systems engineer. After all, the ability to design an entire computer with your own two hands is pretty badass. We'll be revealing everything you need to know about embedded engineering, the technologies they use, the absurd compensation, and the subtle secrets of what makes it so intriguing. Let's discover what it means to be an embedded engineer and give it to you straight. This is the reality of embedded systems engineering. First, let's clear the room and figure out what an embedded engineer actually is. We like to think of them as gadget wizards. These engineers meticulously perfect the engines and bodies of all the seamless gadgets of today. From smartwatches and e-bikes to life-saving heart monitors and flight control systems on space shuttles, embedded engineers are behind all of the magic, which is pretty darn cool. But what exactly is an embedded system and how does it work? Basically, an embedded system is a small computer-like mix of technologies that takes analog, digital, or user inputs and applies its internal algorithms to produce an output depending on what inputs were given. Take a surgical arm, for example. The goal of this embedded system is to perfectly mimic a doctor's careful incision as its input and then recreate it on a much smaller and more precise scale as its output. The entire system that senses, processes, and translates the doctor's action to its own is all inside the surgical arm. In other words, the entire system is embedded right into the device. Now, if you think that's cool, then just wait until we deep dive into the industry-leading GoPro action camera, highlighting what makes this embedded system such a remarkable feat of engineering. But before we get into that, we get to inspect how these engineers hone their crafts and reach wizardry status in the engineering world. Now, there are a few university paths that typically lead to a career in embedded systems, but the most relevant is definitely computer engineering. Make sure to not get discouraged if you're looking into embedded and don't have the right degree. You can become an embedded engineer, or any engineer for that matter, if you're willing to put in the extra work to train yourself. But what work do you have to do to become an embedded engineer? Great question. Let's discuss the most imperative college courses to take for aspiring embedded engineers. Now let's start it off with a fan favorite, the Embedded Systems Design class. Just like it sounds, this course mimics a real-world embedded design. In the next part of the video, we're covering everything to do with the embedded design process, so sit tight to hear the details for this one. But there's not going to be much sitting and waiting in your embedded degree. You've got microcontroller and microprocessor courses up next. The heart of any embedded design is a microcontroller or a more simple microprocessor, which are typically programmed in the C programming language. Here you'll gain a ton of insight into controlling peripherals with a microcontroller and the C skills necessary to get it done. If you want to practice this extremely important skill from home, we recommend trying out the beginner-friendly Arduino microcontroller. From simple LED circuits to developing robots and homemade 3D printers, Arduinos give a great indication of any microcontroller-related field for all skill levels. Check out the resources in the description if you're interested. Next, the computer systems and architecture courses are a must-have, giving a detailed perspective on all the electronics that go into making a computer. Further, these courses teach you how to interface with peripherals, users, and even other computers. Similarly, it is imperative that you take a low-level programming class so you understand enough machine language to control the hardware in your embedded designs later on. Most embedded engineers need to know a healthy chunk of circuitry as well for hardware design and debugging, which leads us to the shocking world of analog and digital circuits. Topics in these courses include everything from simple passive devices and logic gates to more intricate circuit schemes that really get those oscillators teetering. The last classes we'll touch on are extremely important to embedded engineers, data structures and algorithms. Debatably, the harshest constraints of embedded designs are the time and computing power that your programs consume. Without a structured background for efficient practices and structures, you'll be treading water trying to figure out how to squeeze a 50 microsecond program into a fraction of that time. Now, of course, there are other important math, physics, and engineering courses that have varying levels of real-world help for your career. But the ones we just covered are pretty much the must-haves for embedded engineering. For more information, you can check out our electrical or computer engineering curriculum roadmaps. But enough with the university stuff. Let's get our hands dirty with that real-life embedded engineering design. Just as promised, we'll be investigating the fascinating details of a GoPro digital camera to carry us through the nuances of an embedded engineering design. We've simplified the details just a touch for the sake of the video, but all the core concepts hold true. Without further ado, let's get right into it.
It all started with GoPro founder and California native Nick Woodman hatching a brilliant idea that would eventually cement the dominance of embedded systems in the 21st century. He was simply looking for a better way to film him and his friend surfing, speculating that there would be a ton of others like them with the need for a small but powerful digital camera. This idea perfectly set the stage for a world-class, multi-million dollar embedded system design. They went to the drawing board and decided upon three major parts of the camera to start designing, which are consequently the three areas of focus for every embedded design. So make sure you're paying attention here. They are the hardware that can film and store quality videos, the software that controls the process and interfaces with users, and the compact, rugged casing to protect the technology inside. But what is the technology inside? What are the embedded engineers actually designing? Okay, let's explore that. Starting with the most obvious part of the camera, we got the lens. The engineers took their time choosing this part, as it's the single most important input for the camera. The light reflected off the subject to be stored as a video. Once this light is herded into the body of the camera, it needs to be transformed into an electrical signal so our embedded technologies can manipulate and store it. This transformation from light to an electrical signal is accomplished with a CCD, or charge coupled device. Basically, this CCD has an entire field of discrete points that light hits, and each point emits a current proportional to how strong the incident light was. The embedded engineers chose the single best CCD for the design as there's simply no room for inefficiencies in this small camera. The electrical signal from the CCD is routed through an analog to digital converter so that the GoPro's brain, the processor, can interpret the exact levels of light that the lens initially captured. Like previously mentioned, the processor is the most important part of the system, as it ties together all of the hardware with software algorithms. The embedded engineers at GoPro chose and programmed a processor that can accomplish their industry-leading video stabilization, logging the high-quality video to the camera's memory, and many more tasks never seen by the user. Seeing as the processor is the integral core of the entire system and is extremely challenging to aptly control, most of the embedded engineer's time and effort goes into the planning, programming, and debugging right here in the processor which leads us right into the perfected software of the system. From configuring the start button to the vast image processing algorithms, each and every algorithm has been decidedly chosen to optimize the camera for maximum performance, cutting out any operations that aren't absolutely necessary to the success of the device. Without an immaculate attention to detail among these tens of thousands of lines of code, there is no chance of GoPro being the industry giant that it is today. Can you imagine the struggles of fitting a world-class camera, ready to take a beating and get thrashed underwater, in a case not much bigger than a golf ball? It's astonishing that the camera has more than a few minutes of battery life for all the tough constraints it has. This has all thanks to the meticulously optimized hardware and software that embedded engineers spent so many hours to perfect. This is why GoPro is worth hundreds of millions of dollars and has been critically acclaimed for years. Which gives you a good idea of not only the thought, persistence, and innovation that goes into an embedded systems design, but also just how awesome building one can be. And hey, if you ever hatch that $600 million embedded idea like Nick Woodman did, just remember who taught you about embedded systems, okay? That's all I'm saying. Help a brother out. Now, before we wrap up, we know you want to hear about some dollar signs. How much do embedded engineers make? For the niche, tedious, and rewarding work that they do, embedded software and systems engineers get paid a lofty $151,000 and $170,000 a year on average, substantially higher than the average engineer at about $104,000 a year in the States, according to Glassdoor. Compensation aside, embedded engineering is a growing and fantastically interesting field that perfectly blends the high elegance of software into the discrete atmospheres of hardware electronics. Now, with all of this in mind, do you want to be an embedded engineer? Let us know in the comments below. For more embedded engineering information, check these out and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.